John? Yep. All right. She should be oriented correctly this time. Yeah. Okay, we're back. Look good? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Nick. Cheers, buddy. So we'll wait and let some folks get gathered up before we get started. But um, we ran out of guide beer this week, right, Nick? Yep. Didn't last very long. So if any of the guys from Sweetwater are listening, we're out of guide beer. We could use some more. We have toilet paper. We're willing to trade, right? For sure. For sure. So in the meantime, for those of you that live in Harrisonburg, um, Jack Browns delivers beer. So if Aaron Ludwig's watching out there, I got one of my favorite beers delivered. Hopefully that doesn't go away when this whole pandemic stuff. Yeah, that's beer be delivery a is uh, a like, why did that become a good idea just in the last three weeks? How's that not always been smart? All right. So we'll, we'll wait another minute or so and then we'll, we'll get started. This is my practice one. I keep that one too. Do you, you want it? Yep. You're going to have to fight my kids over it. Over well, my... they're not here. So. <laughs> they're at school. My kids are in school. This is like eighth period, you know, this time of day. They're probably bushed. My wife is probably bushed. I got people joining us? Yeah. 25 on right now. Is Matt on there? Don't know yet. Matt, can you hear us? He usually gives us a sound check. Got your wife and TH. Hmm? There you go. I think you got another niece or someone on. Nathan and Connor say hi. Oh, nice. Nathan and Connor. Hello. That's from New Jersey. That's up in New Jersey. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get started. So first of all, uh, thanks for joining us again tonight. Um, I'm gonna be tying a couple of nymph. I'm gonna tie a nymph and a dry fly. We're gonna start working on dry flies. This is the second um, installment of our beginner fly tying. So Nick Seacrest is here with me, and he is uh, doing the production and also gonna be answering questions. So he can answer questions for everyone this evening through Messenger. Uh, but he also may ask me some of the questions, especially if they're ones that he feels like everybody needs to hear. So um, it's a little bit interactive that way. Feel free to type in in the comments um, if you've got questions. Um, and then as always, after this is, this is over, feel free to call or email the shop uh, if you need additional help. Thanks to all you folks who bought some fly tying kits from us last week. Uh, we still have the same deal going, the Wapsi fly tying kit. Um, is is available. It's still discounted, right? Mm -hmm. It's discounted. Um, and some of the materials from that we're going to try and incorporate into some of the flies that we're tying. So we're going to start off this evening by tying a nymph. It's probably in the last couple of years become one of the most popular nymphs in our fly shop. Uh, kind of made popular with uh, Euro nymph fishermen. And uh, it's essentially a pheasant tail nymph. Uh, so with, with what we call a hot spot. So a hot spot is just any bright, brilliant color tied in um, sparingly on a fly. And for whatever reason, trout just like to key in on a hot color. So for those of you who have ever had um, a fish come eat your strike indicator, right? Right when you think those the smartest animal in the world, they eat a big pink bobber, okay? So um, the fly we're gonna tie first is the Frenchie, all right? And um, so a little bit more complicated than, than last week's flies, and that's the way it's gonna go. We're gonna start stepping up a little bit, okay? Um, as far as materials go, it's tied on a nymph hook. You can use any size that you'd like. Tonight, I'm gonna be tying with a size 14 uh, nymph hook, okay, traditional nymph hook. Um, 
that's that's to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, so hopefully you guys can see it a little bit, uh, a little bit more detail on when I'm tying. So we're gonna we're gonna get started here. Get my hooks out and. This fly, part of the reason it's really productive is because it's extremely heavy, all right? So one of the keys to catching fish on nymphs is being down deep and being in the strike zone in front of them. So um, I like to tie mine with tungsten. I know it costs more, but it's a lot heavier uh, than, than a brass bead. And um, for those of you who are new to tying, particularly nymphs or even streamers, a lot of questions we get in the shop are about pairing up fly, uh, the hook size with the beads. And um, fortunately, a lot of these beads we buy from Wapsi will actually give you a range of hooks that they'll suit. So for example, this is a 764 bead, but it will pair with a 12, a 14, or a 16. So 14 is in the middle of the range, and so that's what it pairs best with. But you, you can cover several hooks with this, with this size bead. Okay, and I like heavy flies. I love fly tying because you get to make flies as heavy as you want. And um, that means less split shot. It means less attachments on your leader, less tangling. Um, and your fly gets down to the bottom quicker in the run, okay? So instead of drifting halfway through a pool before it's down, it can get down right away. All right, so just like last week, for those of you who watched, your beads come counter drilled. So you've got a big side and a small side. And when we go to when we go to put the bead on, you want the small end facing forward. You see that all right, Nick? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our tungsten bead on. And go ahead and get your hook into the vise, okay? And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put some lead wraps on there. So we have tungsten and lead. So this, this thing's really gonna get down. Um, so you can use different sizes. I'm using a 0.02 lead. Colby's here. <laughs> Colby's here tonight too. Your Same mom time. says she loves you as well. Uh, um, so we're gonna do like six or seven wraps of lead and you can see you just it's very soft, right? So you can just wrap it on and you can just pinch it off with your fingers. Uh, no need to even use your scissors. And then all we need to do is get it wrapped around nice and neat. So kind of use your fingers, use your fingernails if you've got them. And I don't want it quite that long. And then we're gonna push it up in right behind our tungsten bead, okay? So that's where we're at. Everybody with me? All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is get our thread on the hook. Um, I'm using some bright, like fluorescent orange thread. If you've got hot pink thread, um, you're gonna need it for the hot spot at the end, okay? That's what makes up the collar, okay? Brian, okay. how are you uh, picking your thread size? Well, I picked this because it was the only size that I had in this color. Um, so, yeah, you pick your you pick your thread size based on your hooks. Okay, um, I think this is ordinary flat wax, which is pretty thick and pretty big for a size fourteen. But I'll make it happen. You just if you've got a thicker thread for a nymph, you just may have to be a little bit more um, intentional with your thread wraps. Don't get going crazy like we did on our streamer last week where you're trying to bulk everything up. You may bulk up too quick, but I like, I like flat threads. They don't roll and they trap materials. So get your thread started, get it over top of your hook and take some wraps to get it attached. Okay, we're kind of laying a base of thread on back to the bend. And then just like with our golden retriever last week, cut that off. Just look at our golden retriever last week. We're gonna build a little bit of a dam. So we're gonna build up the thread back behind the lead wire. And that's gonna help hold it up in place. All right? So we're gonna build a little bit of a, a ramp up onto 
our lead wire there. Okay, now we've got several sections of this nymph we're gonna tie. We've got the tail, which is gonna be tied out of uh, hackle barbs. Um, if you've got other feathers, um, coque de leon, anything that's nice and straight and tapered, you can use. Pheasant tail tips. You can use pheasant tail tips, that's right. Um, so there's a lot of things you can tie tails out of. Don't get too picky with recipes, all right? Especially in the middle of a pandemic, it's like cooking with what you have in your pantry. You've got to, sometimes you've got to improvise, all right? There's plenty of other things that you can use. So uh, the tail will be hackle barb tips. The uh, thorax is going to be, um, we're going to use um, uh, pheasant tail. And the abdomen is going to be dubbed, okay? So that's, we'll, we'll get there. But first things first, let's tie in our tail. So I just have some hackle. Okay, if you guys have hackles or necks, the, the Wapsie kit's got um, hackle, yeah. hackles in it, right? Some assorted feathers. Yeah, and you want these stiffer ones, okay? You don't want really webby. You see this stuff down here is real webby, and that's not gonna, that's not gonna have as much support for the tail, okay? Um, so you want some that are a little bit straighter, all right? So you can see here, I kind of pull the hackle down, it gets them to straighten out, and then I'm gonna go in real carefully, and kind of pull a little section off of the stem, okay? I got them in my hand, pinched in my fingers, and all I need to do is kind of turn them around and orient them uh, so they're facing the rear of the fly. So that's what I just did in my hand, I kind of turned them around. Now, if, <clears throat> if, you, need, if you need your uh, hackle barbs evened, you can get a hair stack, I mean a yeah, hair stacker, and there's little tools, little metal trays and stuff you can use to kind of knock them down and even the tips up. But if you get them off a really good hackle, you can see the, the tips are usually pretty, pretty even, especially since you're only using um, so many of them. Okay. So, and then as far as color goes, you can use Dunn, you can use a light brown. I've seen these Frenchies tied with a bunch of different colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure for my tail and you're going to kind of measure the length from the bend of the hook back to this, um, back to the back of the lead, all right? And then I'm going to kind of re-grab it in my left hand, and I'm going to pinch, and I'm gonna hold them right on top of the hook. Bring my thread over loosely and pull straight down. You want these attached to the top of the hook, okay? And make sure that you like your length, okay? Don't panic if it's too long or too short. All you gotta do is unwrap, okay? That's one thing. When you start off as a beginner, you'll panic when you make a little mistake or when your thread breaks or anything like that. That's, that's part of fly tying. Just, just don't panic. Unwrap it um, and, then, and then get going again, okay? Uh, better to do it right the first time and then have a fly that you're just not happy enough with that you're not going to fish it. So I'm going to wrap my thread back um, towards the bend. Now, if you go too far, okay, it'll start to pull it down. Okay, because it'll start to pull it down. So you don't want that. You want it to just kind of sit nice in line with the shank of the hook. Okay, and then I'm going to come up here. And if I've got a couple little tips, I can trim them, but I actually don't think I need to. Okay, those blend in. Nice. All right, now let's go back. So we've got our tail in. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in our pheasant tail. And we're going to tie in... Um, some ultra wire, okay? So ultra wire I got in copper. <clears throat> you can use gold, all right? And I have brassy size, which is pretty fine, pretty fine stuff. So not only does the wire give it like a segmentation, a ribbing, but it actually will make it, make it stronger too, okay? Because um, pheasant tail is just a pretty fine feather and if a tooth gets in there and, and breaks it, it can unravel. But with the, with the wire holding it down, you see that all right? Mm -hmm. You can see it gives it extra strength. It makes your fly more durable, okay? So the first thing we'll do is get our thread ready for some wire. Here we go. Kevin Cryer, a little shout out to his favorite guy. What's up, Kevin? Miss everybody. Miss you guys. All right, and what I'm gonna do is my pheasant tail is gonna wrap around in one direction, okay? I'm gonna wrap that around 
going clockwise and advance it forward. And then my wire is gonna wrap around in the opposite direction and that'll help hold it in place. And so when I go to tie this wire in, I'm gonna orient it off this backside so that it's ready to go around this way, if that makes, makes sense, okay? Okay, so got my wire tied in and then I'm gonna go in and get my pheasant tail. So, any color pheasant tail you want, all right? I kinda have uh, this dark, what color is this, Nick, brown? Yeah, rusty brown. Rusty brown, okay, you can use natural. Again, whatever you got, it's no big deal. I'm gonna come in to the feather and I'm gonna grab a few of these segments, okay? Because I want, I want there to be more than one. There's gonna be several actually, okay? And this is a pretty big fly, a uh, pretty big nymph. A lot of these Frenchies people will tie in 16s and 18s, a lot smaller. Okay, so I'm gonna cut, cut off a section of pheasant tail, all right? And I'm gonna tie it in tip first, but I'm gonna cut those tips off. I don't need the whole length of this. And whenever you tie on a really fine tip, which is tapered, they're more, more likely to, to slip out of your thread, okay? So I'm gonna bunch these up together. Snip them flat there. I'm gonna tie them in at an angle, okay? so that they're ready to wrap. Tie it back, oops. Tie it back to where the bend is, okay? And then advance forward, all right? We're gonna go about two thirds of the way up the hook with our peacock, all right? How's everybody doing, all right? Nick, do you have any questions? Roll around. Let's keep going. Good. Okay, we're gonna to start to wrap our peacock, okay? And just be careful with it. Watch that hook point on the first few, kind of. And this is a technique I use a lot. Um, I'll use my finger to hold things in place as I re-grab material, okay? So instead of, if you got hackle pliers, use them. Again, I think I said this last week, I started fly, tying flies when I was like 11 and I just didn't have a lot of tools. I, I didn't have a hackle plier, so I just kind of taught myself with my fingers how to do stuff. But there is a tool for everything, so if you got a good pair of hackle pliers, those could help. All right, and bring in this material up, and then I'm going to take a couple of good securing wraps. My pheasant tail. All right, how's that look on y'all's side? See, I can see my side. That's... Oh, sorry, Nick. You got that? We back. All right. All right, so I went in and all I did was just tie off my peacock and trim it. Okay? Awesome. How are we looking good? Looking good. Okay. All right. Now, next thing we're gonna do is wrap this wire and we're gonna bring it over. Start wrapping it forward. I don't want it to pin my tail down. Stuff's pretty strong so you can Get your segments going. Calendar got really worried that you spilled the beer in that uh, in this half. If you're not my friend, and if I did, I could just call Jack Browns, and they'll be here in no time. Okay, so you want your segments to be even, right? Do the fish really care if they're not perfect? No, but as a beginner fly tire, you want to try and practice these things to to get them all going right. How's it look, Nick? All right? Looks great. Okay. Just keep saying that, Nick. Every yeah, time I, I ask you how they look, just say, really hey, terrible. wow, that looks, that looks amazing. Okay? All right. 
Not as good as Colby's, but. Ooh, well, be Colby's not here. All right, so there we are. We got our tail, we got our body, we got our segments, okay? And now we're gonna build a collar, okay? We're gonna build a collar, actually two collars. We're gonna put dubbing on, and then we're gonna use our bright thread as, a, as an additional hotspot, okay? All right, so you can use all kinds of dubbings. Um, I've got this scud dub in, in pink, pretty coarse. Um, for those of you just starting off uh, who have never dubbed before, there's a little, there's definitely technique to it, okay? And all dubbing is different. Nymph dubbings are coarser, which means they're not gonna adhere to the thread quite as well as like a fine dry fly dubbing, which we'll actually do shortly. Um, so they sell waxes, we sell waxes um, that you can use. We have different tackiness. So we have some high tack, right? Low tack. We laughing at it. people writing funny things. <laughs> okay, I, I use my I use my fingers and I use my tongue. Don't worry, mom. I wash my hands like fifty five times today. Okay, so we're gonna take our dubbing and one of the one of the tricks to dubbing is to not try and put too much dubbing on one fine piece of thread. Okay. It's, it's better to use more thread and less dubbing and just take more wraps. That gives you more control, okay? So if you try and put a lot on in one spot, you'll find that it, um, it bulks up too quickly, okay? And the way we you see I got my fingers a little wet, and one of the tricks is you, you pinch it tightly and roll it, but you only roll it in one direction. You'll see people go like this, back and forth. That's, that doesn't work. That, you roll it on, you roll it off. You roll it on, you roll it off. Two fingers screws it up. Yes, yes. So I just go in and I pinch it really tight and I roll it in one direction. You can always add, you can always add a little bit more. And when you're dubbing on a nymph, it's not the same as dubbing on a dry fly. Okay, if that dry fly, you try and get these nice fine tapered bodies and you don't want all these hairs kind of sticking out of place. Um, they're supposed to look sleek, right? Like a mayfly, but nymphs are supposed to look buggy, okay? They're supposed to, it's okay if they got little hairs kind of, you know, like, like everybody has these days. Nobody's got a haircut in yep. a month. Why are you staring at me so hard? <laughs> that thing's looking ratty. No wonder you're not on the camera. Okay, so we're gonna take a couple wraps um, to get that nice collar going. And remember, it's a nymph, okay? So there's not a ton of rules. It doesn't have to be exact. You can add more, you can have less. You get a little crazy with your dubbing, you can just cut it out, okay? Your boys wanna know what the best dubbing color is. <laughs> well, I'm sure their sister's watching and she would probably say pink. Pink would be the best. It all depends on the fly, right, Nick? All right, now, if you look, I'm trying to see what you guys are seeing. I got my collar, and then I'm trying to let a little bit of this thread show up right at the head. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the idea is to, that's actually part of the fly, is showing off this, this uh, little bit of thread, okay? And then I'm gonna whip finish, and we're gonna be done. All right? That went too bad, wasn't it? No, that's great. So when, like, you know, this is a, a fly that a lot of people, consider like an attractor works well a lot of times, but is there a time throughout the year that you would reach for this more often or that you really like it for certain reasons? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, it, it just, it catches fish. I mean, this thing is killer. It's a pheasant tail nymph is probably one of the best known, most popular nymphs in all of fly fishing. And this is a heavy pheasant tail that's got some color to it, you know? So I'm going to put a little bit of glue in. Right at the head, try not to get it all over your, your dubbing. You just kind of come in and lay it right on those thread wraps. TH wants to know if we sell a screen to keep dubbing out of your beer. He's, having some, <laughs> he's ingesting some, some scud dub and some UV dubbing. Okay, it's okay to eat UV dubbing. It's just a synthetic. It's really not going to kill about all of the other stuff we dub with, like muskrat and beaver. I mean, do you really want muskrat fur in your beer? I don't know. I don't. All right, that's the Frenchie, okay? 
See, does Kevin, Kevin Kreider, do you approve? Is that, is that okay? Does that work for you? Okay. I got a few of these here. I like to practice once, one time before I go to time. So, okay. Any questions on that? Suzanne actually called the last one. She beat the kids to it. Yeah? She wants the first Frenchie. Okay. Sounds good. Kevin says nice. That's All right. Nice. So, that's the Frenchie nymph. Okay. No rules. You can have different colors, different color tail, different color uh, pheasant tail, different color collar. Um, 14, 16s, 18s, pretty standard. You can tie it jigged. Um, tying a lot of jig flies these days is the way to go. Um, but really, have fun with it. You know, don't be too picky about it. And um, tie a lot of them because this is going to be your go-to fly. This, this is going to be your go-to fly. All right, so I wanted to do something else tonight. We wanted to start diving into dry flies a little bit. Um, dry flies can be the more intimidating patterns for beginners to get into. Um, there's rules. You have to keep things under certain sizes and parameters so that they function properly. They land on the water. They don't roll over. Um, you know, trout have a tendency to be a lot more selective about dry flies, right? They come up, uh, it's drifting very slowly. They, they, um, they eyeball them. Um, they're more leery of them because they're at the surface. They're, they're more at risk when they're at the surface, all right? Whereas a nymph drifts to their mouth uh, down in their dining room where they feel comfortable, you know, they're not going to stare at it quite as hard. So, so dry flies can be difficult. And what I wanted to do tonight was try and take some of that out of it. Um, and so I chose to teach parachutes for a couple of reasons. One, I think they fish better. I like fishing parachutes because it can imitate a dun. It can imitate, imitate an emerging uh, dry. It can imitate a spinner, right? Because the hackles are out. Um, so you're kind of covering a lot of grounds in the hatch. It can be almost at any point during the hatch or the spinner fall where a parachute can be a good imitation. Um, they're easier to see, all right? Um, and I believe they're easier to tie. Some people don't, but I'm going to show you how to tie one tonight, and then you can decide whether you think that's really, really impossible or not. Um, but I got some tricks uh, to make tying parachutes a little bit before I'm fun and easy. So let me clean shop real quick. Oh, Colby left this. You guys will like this. This one's for all you guys, especially you vice club people. In front of the vice. Okay, can you read that now? Back up. This vice, there we go. Okay, so there's a promo code that you can use. Was this just tonight or? Next two days. Next two days. Um, if you put the promo code, what does it say? Fly tying. If you put in fly tying when you go to buy materials, um, you get 20% off. I think it's everything except tools, right? Yep, it's all not, materials. It's not tools, tools. it's materials. No vices. It's not tools or vices, but it's all materials. However, you can get the Wopsy kit uh, for 20% off, all right? So, save you a little money there. Um, is that back in the shop for you? Just a little bit. All right, let me get my materials. Are the criders going to tie dry flies? That's what I want to know. Are they going to tie dry flies? Okay, so the fly we're going to tie this evening is a very basic dry fly. Um, it's called a clink hammer. Um, I tied one a little bit earlier. So you can see here, this is what we're going to tie. Um, I'm using an emerger hook. You don't have to. You can just use a standard dry fly hook. Um, uh, but this is the early stages of the bug coming up out of the water. And so that's why it's on an emerger hook, which is curved. A lot of it will sit down under the surface, and the parachute will sit right at the surface, okay? And so tonight, I'm using a size 12 emerger dry fly hook. Um, and I got a little dubbing for the body. It's just a gray, uh, Adam's gray. Um, super fine dubbing, okay? And I've got polypropylene or poly yarn as my post. And then you'll need some hackles, okay? Some, some nice dry fly hackles, all right? So those are the materials. Um, oh, and, I, and my thread, sorry. Uh, UTC 140 flat 
you can use all kinds of different things. You can use 6.0, 6.0 thread in black. The only, only time your thread is going to show is at the very head, okay? Um, What's a, why would you use like calf body for a post instead of pair right. post or kind of the differences between the two? All right, good question. So there's a lot of different things you can make posts out of, and I think that's part of the reason a lot of people find parachutes to be difficult, okay? Because of what you build your post out of. We're going to use polypropylene um, or poly yarn because it's the easiest, all right? So first of all, you'll see when we go to tie it on, you can leave it as long as you want. So you can leave a really nice tall post and then come back later and cut it. And so having a tall post really makes it easier for you to wrap around it. Um, other materials like calf, they're tapered, right? So they're thick at the bottom and thin at the top. And so as you're putting your uh, hackles on, they naturally want to slide up and off. I'm sure it's never happened to you before, Nick, when you've been tying your parachute. No, that never. Your hackles have never just come up and off. Not right? a chance. Um, and uh, you know you have to get you have to get them measured up right. They can bulk up your hook quite a bit. Um, I'll I'll show later on. Um, I'll show some dry flies like Royal Wolves and stuff that have uh, different hairs and feathers and stuff as as the upright wings. Um, but for beginners, this is going to be way easier, okay, um, than tying in like a, a hair. All right, let's get started. Hold on. Now we're good. Is Brian Keller out there? Is that what you said? Oh, yeah. Brian? He's the one been worried about your beer spilling. What a guy. Kevin says he's going to watch the struggle first and then decide if it's worth the time. <laughs> If I struggle with it, he's just going to quit. Is that, is that basically where it's at? That's what it looks like. Yeah. Oh, hey, that's why I'm behind the camera. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I got my merger hook. Now, something you may want to try and do a couple times, if you've never done this before, ever, rather than building the whole fly and doing the dubbing and all the stuff I'm about to do, you may want to just practice tying a parachute with nothing else on the hook. And that way, if you foul it up, you can just take the razor blade to it and try it again, okay? Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the whole fly, the emerging fly, all right? So, let's get started. Put that hook down a little bit. So you can see this, these hooks have a nice big, nice curve to them, which is gonna give a good curve to the body of your fly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a good base of thread on my entire hook. Okay, this is the only time when you're tying a dry fly where you're allowed to go a little crazy with your thread wraps, okay? Because now that we're entering the realm of finer flies, and this is a big one too, like this is, what is it, what did I say this was, size 12? Yeah, size 12. I went big so everybody can hopefully see it a little bit better, but thread wraps have a purpose, right? Each wrap has a purpose. If it only takes two wraps to hold a material, then you just take two wraps. Because otherwise, you'll, if you're a big streamer tire or a nymph tire, you'll find your hand just going around and around. It's like a, it's like a habit. It's sort of like when you're fly casting and you just keep casting. I'm like, put it on the water, put it on the water, right? So you get into a habit and you gotta be careful with that habit when you're tying dry flies because your fly will bulk up really, really quickly. Okay, and you don't want that. All right, so we're gonna go Take our thread back on the hook, a little bit harder on an emerger hook to find the exact point that you start, but I'm just kind of right here near, near the barb, if you have a barb, okay? And again, we're using the um, super fine dry fly dubbing in Adam's Gray. Man, you can tie this in any color. You know what's really good to tie a clean camera out of is olive, mm -hmm. and then do a done wing, and it's like a, it's, a, it's an emerging betis, emerging blooming olive. Okay, so dry fly dubbing. It's much finer than that coarse stuff that we just put on um, on the nymph, okay? A lot more fine. And what we're gonna try and create is a little bit of a, a taper, excuse me, to the body. So we're gonna start at the back, very fine, and it's gonna get a little, little bit thicker as it goes up towards uh, where our parachute's gonna be, okay? So kind of work this material, stretch it out a little bit. And just like I said before, wet your fingers. And it's good to use a little bit more thread and a little bit less bulk in any one place, okay? Just 
spin it just in one direction. Lots of pressure. And like I said, if you need wax, put the wax on. Don't go crazy with the wax either though. It'll, it'll gob up and bulk up really quickly. Okay. We got our dubbing on. Can always add more, all right? Let's get started. So we're gonna take a couple wraps right here at the back. And your first wrap or two, you wanna advance forward relatively quickly, okay? And then you can see we're gonna start building a little body up as we move forward. So what I'm doing in some places is taking more than one wrap over top of itself, okay? To give it a little bit more body. How's that look over there? Pretty good. Let's get a little bit more dubbing. But you can see we've come about <clears throat> two thirds of the way up the hook is where we're gonna put our post, okay? So you don't wanna crowd the eye with your post. Let me get a little bit more dubbing on there. All right, good. Is my dad watching? Oh yeah. So my dad has started tying flies. He's perfectly suited for it. He, he was a dentist his whole life. It's just funny, I learned how to tie flies from VHS cassettes and from old fishermen. And my dad's learning how to tie flies from YouTube and Facebook Live. <laughs> Full circle. He sends me a picture of his flies there every day. Dad, you're looking awesome, buddy. Keep it up. It's actually kind of hurting my feelings a little bit. <laughs> All right, how we look over there, Nick? We got a little bit of a, a body tapering up a little bit, okay? And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie our post in, okay? So, this is where you'll see how easy polyarn is. So, I like high vis all right? They make this stuff in like bright orange, chartreuse, fluorescent yellow. They make it white, okay? But really, if you look at the fly from underneath, the fish don't really see this post very well, okay? Um, and even if they do, they like hot colors occasionally. So it's really for you to see it. Um, white is probably the most common color, but the problem is when you're, when you're, you got a fly on the water with a million white bubbles, white foam bubbles, uh, white can disappear on you pretty quickly. So on this first one, go ahead and get a pretty good strand of this stuff, okay? Get a pretty good strand because it's, you, you want to leave it long. It'll help you out, okay? So you can see I cut a nice, nice big strip here. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold this post up underneath the hook, okay? So we're gonna use the whole thing, we're gonna double it over, all right? And if you're tying a, a much finer dry fly, you may find that you don't need quite as much uh, of this material, all right? Um, but you can just pick it out, right? It's really easy. So what I'm gonna do, now that I've got this thing, I've got some pressure, I'm pulling it up from underneath the hook. I'm gonna take a couple wraps in front of it, crisscross behind it, and then I'm actually gonna go around the post itself just as if it's a hook shank, okay? So I'm gonna take a couple wraps in front. I'm gonna crisscross again to the back, okay? And you can see how that's kind of getting my, my post in place, all right? And now here's the next step. I'm gonna wrap my thread around the post and I'm gonna work up. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it more rigid. This is really um, flimsy material. And I'm going to create a thick, stiff portion of the post where I'm gonna lay my hackles, all right? So that's, this is something that not everybody does, and I'm telling you it makes a big difference in keeping it nice and straight, okay? So you can go ahead and, and just kinda of hold, hold the post with one hand, and I'm gonna to begin to Wrap around the post, put several wraps at the base to get it nice and stiff. 
And then I'm gonna slowly start going up a little bit. How far up do you go? Well, I don't really, I don't really know how to tell you that. We'll, we'll see, I'll show you kind of where I'm gonna stop. And now I'm gonna start coming back down again. It's like a 16th of an inch or less. It's not a whole lot, okay? All right. Take a couple of anchoring wraps, right? Those anchoring wraps. And we're gonna get our thread in nice and close to our post, really close, because we're gonna tie a hackle in and we want it to be able to immediately uh, wrap around. Now, uh, real quick, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue into that post, okay? And that's gonna help stiffen it. It's also gonna help my hackle adhere to it, all right? When in doubt, glue, 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 glue. There you go. Yeah, any more questions? Are you good? Nick, are you learning anything? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Just, just feeling worse and worse about my dry flies. <laughs> All right, so here we are. We've got our post, we've got our body. The next step is to prepare our hackle, tie it on, okay, tie it off, and we're gonna put a little bit more dubbing on um, so that we can dub right around this and up to the eye, okay? So, hackles and hackle selection. All right, a lot of people have questions about hackles, all right? They're expensive. Um, but they go, they last a long, a, you know, you can get a lot out of a big full neck of them. Um, I'm gonna get, uh, this done hackle here. And when it comes to sizing, right? When you start, when we begin to tie traditional upright wing, cat skill style, dry flies, we're gonna have a lot of measuring that we do to make sure that the barb length is accurate. Because when you wrap your hackles around the traditional way, if they're too long, your fly will just roll over. If they're too short, it'll sit down on its head, okay? So how it sits in the water is really affected by the proper length of this. And there's hackle gauges and stuff that can help you out. When you're wrapping them around in a parachute um, style, it's not, quite as, it's not quite as important. If they're a little bit long, it just the fly will look leggy, okay? So if you don't have really fine ones, you may be able to get away with it on, on a parachute. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna just grab one, one feather. Find a good one there. Okay, so I'm just gonna use one, one feather, all right? And do you see how this feather is already naturally curved? So I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna use that curve and tie it in so that it's going with the curve. Okay, and then also on a hackle feather, you have your shiny side, which is this, the top of the feather, and then you have your dull side, which is the bottom, okay? And on some feathers, the hackles will actually orient, curve a little bit more down, and those you want angled down, okay? You want them pointing downward on your fly, on your parachute, okay? So I'm gonna do a couple things here to prepare this, this feather, okay? Again, we don't want the really webby stuff down here at the bottom, okay? So we can go ahead and just pull back on some of that, and we can come in, and just with your fingers, you can remove those barbs. And in fact, I'm gonna come in with my scissors, because I don't need a real long stem here, and cut that off, okay? So that's the first step. You see that all right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this is something else that you can do. You don't have to but it's something that I like to do because one of the problems with palmering a hackle around for a post is you have all these nice barbs and you end up trapping so many of them, right? You end up wrapping over top of them and it can give you a really bad look. You can have a lot of hackle barbs that are, that are stuck underneath each other, okay? So something you can do to prevent that is on the inside. So if this is my hackle here and I'm gonna wrap it this way, then this will be the inside. You can go in and you can literally remove all the barbs from one side, okay? And if you only have really short hackles, you may not be able to get away with that because it just may not be full enough. Or maybe you can do it and use two, wrap two together, 
all right? But I'm gonna get rid of some of these hackle barbs. And then what's gonna happen is the stem, right? The stem is gonna lay against that nice glued post. Does that make sense? When you're picking hackle, mm -hmm. as far as like grades and size and stuff, what are you looking for? The best. The dry fly? Only the best. All right, I'll tell a quick story. So I started tying flies when I was really young, like 11, and I tied flies like every day of my life. And like most people, I didn't know how bad I was when I started, but it didn't really matter because I was having fun and being creative and they caught fish. But my twin brother Colby and I started going and doing fly tying demonstrations and going to big fly fish, fly tying shows. And I felt like at some point my tying like hit a wall. Like no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't make my dry fly look any better. better. And I was getting a little bit frustrated and I was at a mid-Atlantic council meeting up in College Park, Maryland, and I won in a raffle. I think one of the fly fishers of Virginia gave me the ticket. I won a grade one grizzly neck, and which was like, at the time, it was like 80 bucks. It was a huge deal for me. And from that point on, my dry flies look better. So having fine quality hackles and materials, they make a difference. They really do. So it can be frustrating when you're tying with stuff that's just not quite right. All right, so I've stripped off one side. You see that all right? I'm gonna orient my um, hackle on the, on, the fl on the fly so that the stem is against the post, the flat side is down, and it's ready to palmer around, all right, um, with the direction of the curve, right? With the same direction of the curve, okay? So I'm gonna lay, so I'm gonna lay it across, and here's, here's, here's a trick, okay? So when you tie this into the hook, you're gonna be starting your first couple wraps up at the top of this black post, okay? And then you're gonna, you're gonna tie them down, okay? So each one's gonna go under the one before, and then you'll ultimately tie off right against the hook shank, okay? So what I do is I leave a little bit of space for the stem here, that's equal to the amount of space that's on the post here, okay? That'll let me get up to the top and then begin to wrap down. Does that make sense? Is this hard to see or hard to articulate? Do it the best we can. Yeah. Okay, so I'm coming across and I'm gonna take a couple of wraps. Okay. I'm gonna move my thread back and I'm going to get rid of that so it's tied in. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little bit more dubbing, okay? And I'm gonna dub right here and then advance my thread up to the, you know, so that I've got this under part kind of covered with a little dubbing. So you've got that stem tied on to the hook, not the, the post. Yeah, I tied it on the hook. Some people tie it onto the post. I've seen it done. Some people are turn their hooks sideways and, and basically use the post as a new hook. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. There's a lot of tricks. Everybody does stuff a little bit differently. You'll find that. I certainly don't have the best way or the only way to do all these things. Hold this back. I'm gonna get a little bit of dubbing up underneath there. And advance my thread forward. All right, good. That look good? Mm -hmm. Okay, next step. We're gonna to start to wrap this hackle. So like I said, you wanna kinda of bring it up to the top, okay? And then you gotta support this, this post, okay? It's, it's stiffer down there at the base with that thread, but as I wrap around, you wanna make sure you're supporting the post. Get that poly yarn, okay? Take a couple wraps and then you're gonna to start to 
go below the last wrap and below it. And you see how I kind of work my thread, my hackle up and down, and that will hopefully keep it from capturing too many hackle barbs. All right. And look, how full you make it, it's up to you. I mean, the more hackle, the more wraps you put on, and the fuller it is, the more it'll float. You know, it won't sink on you quite as much. Um, but you can kind of eyeball it and decide whether you think you need more or not. All right, I feel like that's pretty, pretty close to being done. So here's the key, okay? You don't want to trap all that good work. I've got pressure on my hackle. I'm gonna come in with my left hand and I'm gonna pull all the wraps and my post back. Can you see that, Nick? I'm yep. just exposing the hook and what's left of my, my hackle stem. All right, and I'm gonna keep this, all this back up out of the way, and I'm gonna put just a, a scotch more dubbing on. Some people like to leave a little bit bigger head. I'm gonna put a little bit more dubbing on. Is anybody tying along? Kellner wants to know what your favorite floating is. Favorite floating? Gink, Gerke's Gink. Gerke's gink, it's old, it's been around forever. But like Nick said, the only downside to gink is when it gets hot, it gets pretty runny. And when it's cold, it's like impossible to get out of the bottle. Yeah. So it's, it's a little temperature sensitive. But as far as floating your fly the best, if you treat it right when the temperatures are like they are outside right now, it floats like a champ. It'll float for hours. A quell is very temperature stable. Yeah. Hot, cold, it's easy to get but I do think gink floats a little bit better. Kellner's problem is he catches fish to every cast. And yeah, so they gut. They can't gum. keep the slime off of it. They gum it up. That's a huge problem. You just need to catch less fish. Yeah. It'll float better. Okay, you see that? I got a little bit more dubbing up there at the head, and then I'm gonna just take like maybe, maybe one turn, show a little black head, all right? and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my fly. All right, just be careful when you're whip finishing, keep everything out of the way. If you got a whip finishing tool um, that helps you do that, then go ahead and slide it right in there. All right, let's see. I got my thread tied off, all my hackles are out of the way. Keep everything back, everything's back. It'll go back into position, don't worry. And. Finish off with some glue. Just ever so little, you don't wanna get your dubbing all done up. All right, now, let's take a look at this thing. We can pull it all back up into place. Good. All right, so there we go. Now, time to trim. You can always leave it a little long. I have a pair of scissors on my vest at all times, on my sling pack, okay? There's almost always a need to trim something up when you're on the stream, okay? You can always cut this thing shorter, but you can't add back on. So just kind of pull it tight, all right? Give it a clip, let it hang out a little bit, and there it is. TH is asking about frogs fanny. We mm -hmm. talked a little bit about like powder versus gel floatants and when to use what? Okay, so when you treat a dry fly with a floatant, which is typically a silicone-based gel, you do it dry. So this thing right here is ready to take a floatant. You put a drop in your finger, kind of run it through, get it good and covered on the fly, maybe give it a few casts, a couple false casts, and then that puppy will float for hours. Okay, now if you're catching a ton of fish and you're doing things like squeezing the fly to get it out of the fish's mouth or pinching it with your forceps and you're forcing water in. These are mostly natural fibers. Once the water has, so the, the floatant actually keeps water from penetrating the fibers, okay? But once it does, you can't just add floatant anymore. That's when you have to put a desiccant on. So that's what the dry powders or the beads or the shakes are. So you have top ride and frog's fanny and all those. Those will draw moisture back out. 
you'll find once you start using desiccants, you'll have to keep using them. So every fish or every two or three fish, you'll have to powder it back up. So, so sometimes after I've caught several and my fly is just kind of totally soaked and sinking, I'll powder it, but occasionally what I'll do is I'll just retie. It's good to tie your knots again every now and then. Retie with a new dry fly um, that I've got silicone on. All right, so these are good problems to have. I'm glad nobody's having serious questions about tying parachutes because everybody just tied like the world's best parachute, right? Sure, the towel was. Okay, so as you can see, tying a parachute dry fly, a little bit less complicated, at least in my opinion, than trying to pair perfect split wings and get them to split apart just right and be the right length and Palmer hackles behind them and in front of them and not trap them and all those sorts of things. A parachute is just, it's just simpler to me. Um, so use those tricks, get a nice post, get a good material like poly yarn, something you can see, something that's easy to work with. And, um, and you know, that's, that's what the fish is seeing right there. It's a nice little merger shaped body with little hackle barbs, which imitate legs, you know, hanging down and um, easy to see, easy to fish. And like I said, you can fish it as an emerger, as a dun, or as a spinner. So it's versatile and um, not, not too hard to tie. At least for dry flies, this is kind of the place to start for me. Did Kevin Kreider try one? He had to say, he got <laughs> awfully quiet. <after. laughs> Lee asked again if cattail works. Cattail works, yep. Um, turkey flats. So if you find that cat, so cattail is nice in the sense that it's hollow and it floats pretty well, um, but it's big, it's pretty bulky, all right? Um, turkey flats are nice because they're compressible, right? They're, they compact sort of like this polypropylene. It compacts down really tight. And so it doesn't bulk up your fly right here at the base where the pose goes on, all right? So we'll do calf tail wings and flat wings and stuff later on. Matt said he's gonna stick with buying his dry flies. <laughs> he quit, he just quit, yeah. he quit, good. All right, so one more time, just so you guys can save a couple bucks, okay? If you buy materials for the next, if you buy materials for the next uh, two days, um, you can save 20%, just do, just do uh, the promo code fly time, right? Yep. Fly time. Kevin is also on the buying fly stream. And buy and buy flies. <laughs> <laughs> this was the easy one, guys. Wait till we start doing like parachute stimulators and stuff. Then you're really gonna be hating it. So um, Nick already called my flies. He wants mine. So anyway, uh, we miss seeing you guys um, on these nicer days. You can still come to the shop and hang out in the parking lot. We've we've been coming outside and keeping plenty of distance with folks and answering questions and helping people out. And of course, we're shipping stuff like crazy all over the country. Fly tying has really um, gotten popular, uh, a lot more so, mm -hmm. and, uh, with the current situation. So um, everybody keep tuning in. We're gonna do our best. We're, we've been very busy, but we're gonna do our best to keep having these and tell you further out and tell you which flies we're doing so that hopefully you can you know, gather materials up and, um, and tie along with us. So, and uh, I know I keep saying this, we're gonna have some of our advanced stuff soon too. Um, some vice club flies to do. So anyway, cheers everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great evening.